Ready up live. What's up everybody, Greenskull here to talk to you about the weapons in Destiny. There's some brand new assets and info here, so let's go through it. I'll be showing you pictures and reading the information included. Remember, everything here is a work in progress. This exotic sniper rifle is called Closing Time. Carrying this gun is like wearing a badge of honor. There are weapons that speak to you. To look at them is to hear their stories echo through time. To see yourself stalking your prey through the ruins of a place that humanity used to call home, you need only clutch the grip with your fingers. Closing Time was envisioned to be a weapon imbued with such stories. It wasn't collected from a gun rack at the end of an assembly line. Someone loved it before they too were lost to the dust of our shattered civilization. It was owned by a group of survivalists operating on the new frontier. Like all exotic weapons in Destiny, the guardian who packs them on the mission will not be the original owner. These hunting tools are out there in the wild waiting to be discovered and put back into service. The details in the design of this old long barrel allude to untold adventures, just like the ones you'll experience when you inherit it. New ways to create weapons for the heroes of Destiny have given Bungie new elements they can use to illustrate this world. According to Doyle, Bungie's art lead, the fabrication of this weapon used everything in the upgraded palette. Dave Stammel really wanted to push our new shader system with this weapon, he muses. We have as many different materials as possible on this asset. Gunmetal, plasteel, wood, plastic, and ghillie netting. It showcases the rendering strength and diversity of our new engine. These are the nuances that will haunt your imagination between missions. What will be most important are those moments when this weapon is butted up against your shoulder, when the cabal are in the crosshairs of closing time, and you're about to put their lights out, the only story you'll care about will be your own. Gallahorn. This is Hulk Hogan's belt in weaponized form. Heroes rise and fall before they pass into legend. Weapons that weather the test of time can earn equally bold reputations as they become hoisted by new warriors. To hear Tom Doyle talk about the Gallahorn, this rocket launcher sounds more like a trophy than a deliverer of explosive ordnance. This is the gilded weapon of a city champion. It's a very decorated guardian weapon to say the least. Doyle proceeds to describe what sounds more like an animal, feared and revered with no attempt to be stealthy. It loudly announces its presence with a howl. What started off as a joke ended up making a statement about the game. The initial block model for Gallahorn was cool looking, but it was missing some detail that would make it shine in first person view. After some brainstorming, and a catalyst that came from a concept long since lost to the chaos of the Bungie creative process, the designers envisioned a way to infuse this horn of destruction with a beastly spirit. Mark just kept adding a wolf every day that he was working on the high resolution model. The end result is as ornate as it is deadly. This rocket launcher has the highest WPG count of any Bungie weapon ever, Doyle states with a sly grin. WPG, of course, is the wolves per gun statistic. I thought this concept said a lot about the world we are making, mainly the mythic elements of its fiction. Gallahorn will be hibernating in the mysterious world that's the setting of your next adventure. It waits, buried silently in the rubble, for a guardian brave enough to tame it. Red Death. This is our heavy metal gun. The Red Death isn't a rifle that'll be wielded by everyone. This bloody piece of iron will not be given, it will be found. Exotics are the legendary weapons of yesterday, handcrafted by our ancestors and left strewn about the system. Scoring one on a mission of utmost importance marks the end of one tale for this implement of destruction and the beginning of another. Like every element of the game, this weapon of old tells a story about the world that created it. Talking in more detail about how players can uncover weapons in Destiny, Tom gave some details about how you can build your armory in Destiny. Something that was really important early on was when you saw someone in the game and they had one of these things, it really was a metric of how far they've played in the game, but also the type of activities they like to engage in. Sometimes the process of imagining an exotic weapon begins with something as simple as a name. The name alone is exotic, recalls Tom Doyle. Red Death was what we wrapped the visuals and the fiction around. It really drove all the creative decisions. Like the heroes that will pack it in their inventory for select missions, the Red Death has a reputation that precedes it, a savage bandit weapon. It provides a look into the world outside the city. This new frontier is harsh and, at times, cruel, Tom observes. This is a weapon that was taken from a fallen guardian. The new owner had it repainted and modded. The optics were even hacked with new graphics. By the time this nasty piece of steel sends a burst of dead firepower from your hands, you'll be well on your way to becoming legend. In the world of Destiny, legends come in all shapes and sizes. It just so happens that some of them will be rock stars. Duke Mark 44. It's a modern masterpiece. There will be battles in Destiny that cannot be won with a thundering rifle or an explosive rocket. More desperate moments will find you backed into a corner by ferocious squatters, dead set on evicting you from a haunt of our lost civilization that they've claimed as their own. When you find yourself up close and personal with a hostile landlord, and you will, you'll want a trusty hand cannon by your side. 
From the drafting tables of the weapon foundries of our last safe city comes a standard issue revolver available to anyone brave enough to wield it. Submitted for your approval, the Duke Mark 44. This version of the popular model makes short work of combatants who underestimate its quick draw hollow sight and hair trigger, promises our lead Tom Doyle. The Duke might not be exotic, but that doesn't mean it won't get some love from its owner. Like any gun in the FOTC arsenal, it can be customized over time to fit perfectly in the hand of the hero who brandishes it. It's a solid piece, states Doyle. This weapon is most commonly associated with newer guardians who equip a sidearm in their primary loadout. The Duke Mark 44 is not a weapon designed for silent standoffs. When you unleash it from the confines of its holster, it will be time to dance. The quick will overcome the dead. Thunderlord. At any moment, this gun should feel like it might blow up in your hands. The Thunderlord is so dangerous a weapon that it poses an equal threat to the Guardian behind it as it does to the enemies that appear downrange. This heavy exotic is a foolish aberration, tinkered with in ways few can fully understand. The result of this meddlesome hubris is a beast you can barely control. Given the erratic nature of this augmented armament, it is decidedly rare. According to art lead Tom Doyle, the Thunderlord is a desperate measure on the part of a society that grew weary of being outgunned. The ammunition is some kind of monster that they wouldn't normally use, Doyle warns. The use of electrostatic rounds over this amplitude has been prohibited due to their volatility. Vital missions beg of some room to bend the rules. So far, bungee devs have wielded this belt-fed menace on quests in Los Angeles and Cologne, Germany. On both occasions, it performed with explosive success. Justin Hayward really brought the weapon to life with the lighting effects in the 11th hour before E3, recalls Doyle. It is a great example of how vital effects are for exotic weapons in first person. It's also a great example of how to delight a crowd. A guardian gains the right to add the Thunderlord to their inventory by proving that they're worthy of its firepower. Once earned, it will have to be put to prudent use before its potential can be realized. After all, you don't just deploy explosive ammunition on the first date. Like many of the implements in your armory, this is a gun worthy of a long-term relationship. They talk about weapons in the Bungie podcast. That's right, the Bungie podcast is back. Links in the description if you want to listen. In some heavier news, Joseph Staten, the lead writer and design director at Bungie, announced he was leaving the company. After 15 15 great years at Bungie, from the battlefields of myth to the mysteries of Halo and beyond, I'm leaving to tackle new creative challenges. While this may come as a surprise, fear not. It's been my pleasure building Destiny these past four years, and after the big reveal this summer, our hugely talented team is on track for greatness. I'll be cheering all of them, with all of you, when the game launches next year. Thank you for your support of me, and your continued support of Bungie. We couldn't have done it without you. It'll be interesting to see how this affects the future of Destiny and Bungie, but I expect great things out of Joseph Staten to come. Thanks for watching everybody. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you aren't already. I'll catch you guys next time. What's up everybody? Green Skull here. Bungie just released their new Vidoc or Vidoc, however you want to pronounce it, at Gamescom. This one's called Out Here in the Wild. It shows us a lot of cool new stuff. So I'm going to walk you through it and point out some things you might have missed. For the first few shots here, they're just amping it up, showing stuff we've already seen. Like this fallen captain and his friends among abandoned vehicles. So again, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing we haven't seen before in release trailers or gameplay, 